muted. Hi, everyone. My name is Casey Aldrich, Director of Quality Improvement and Practice Transformation at the National Nurse-Led Care Consortium. And on behalf of the NNCC and our partners, the American Association of Nurse Practitioners, I would like to welcome you to today's Lunch and Learn webinar, Transforming Healthcare, Value, Population, and Data. I'll be moderating, moderating our session today, and thank you all for taking valuable time to join us. Our presenters are Harold Lehman from Johns Hopkins University and Sunny Ainley of Normandale Community College, who are here to discuss their free online training opportunities. We're very excited to share this information with you all. Before we begin the webinar, I'd like to take care of some housekeeping issues. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available in the upcoming week on our NPSAN portal page, and a link to the recording will be sent to all registrants. All participants will be muted throughout the presentation. I encourage you to submit questions during the presentation. Please use the Questions tab on your GoToWebinar control panel as seen on the screen to ask your question. It will be relayed to our presenters and answered at the end of the webinar. A brief survey will pop up at the end of the webinar and be sent in an email later today. Please take a few minutes to complete this survey evaluating the webinar as your feedback is critical to the ongoing development and presentation of webinars such as these. The slides for today's webinar are available as a handout that you can access right now via the handouts pane on your control panel. You can click the name of the handout and it will download via your default web browser. I want to take a quick moment to talk about the national investment taking place for quality improvement in the U.S. with the help of our federal government and our Nurse Practitioner Support and Alignment Network, or NPSAN. The Transforming Clinical Practice Initiative, or TCPI, is the federal government's largest ever investment in practice transformation with over $700 million and four years of commitment to get 150,000 providers enrolled in networks across the country. NNCC is a membership organization of over 250 nurse-led practices, and our mission is to advance nurse-led care through policy, consultation, and programs to reduce health disparities and meet people's primary care and wellness needs. Our partner in this initiative, the American Association of Nurse Practitioners, or AANT, is the largest full-service national professional membership organization for NPs of all specialties. It's leading the way in advocacy, continuing education, and professional development for over 60,000 members. CMS funded NNCC and our partners AANT to develop this Nurse Practitioner Support and Alignment Network to support enrollment of NPs into TCPI-funded practice transformation networks across the country and to develop NP-specific educational material that facilitates practice transformation ahead of payment reform. Our Nurse Practitioner Support and Alignment Project is funded, again, by CMS with a grant from CMS, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the content is provided in today's webinar is solely the responsibility of the authors and does not necessarily represent any official views of CMS or HHS. And then CC and AANP agree that this initiative is important to ensure nurse practitioners receive the support they need to remain competitive in a changing healthcare landscape. NP is the future of primary care in the United States and already provide high quality and cost effective care. This initiative is an opportunity for NPs to prove it by helping CMS and the broader healthcare community to recognize their contribution using practice transformation while preparing like I said, for value-based reimbursement. So about that value-based reimbursement, CMS is provided funding to support programs like ours to prepare clinicians across the country for payment reform, in particular, payment reform under MACRA. Many of you have probably already heard of MACRA. It's legislation that was passed to establish Medicare's quality payment program. Under this quality payment program, clinicians will need to master a specific set of skills to demonstrate the value of the care they deliver and will see, receive payment adjustments accordingly. The skills necessary include the ability to report on the quality of care being delivered, to report on resource use, identify clinical practice improvement or CQI activities they're engaged with, and use health IT effectively. 
So even if you think that the QPP changes may not apply to you based on your practice or patient population, you'll still need to demonstrate these four abilities in your practice to succeed in a value-based payment environment. The TCPI and their practice transformation networks are meant to provide clinicians with the skills necessary to execute these four elements in practice. So we know that NPs have a large growing role in the delivery of health care, especially in primary care. NNCC and AANP want to connect nurse practitioners to these TCPI-funded practice transformation networks. These peer-based learning networks have the res responsibility for enrolling and supporting clinicians through practice transformation. They provide free boots on the ground technical assistance and services to help practices realize transformation. In return, nurse practitioners can help these networks by serving as leaders. NPs are familiar with many aspects of the change package of the TCPI as it aligns closely with principles of nurse-led care. And oftentimes, NPs already have experience working in collaborative, interdisciplinary, team-based environments. PTNs can provide, these practice transformation networks can provide nurse practitioners with, and nurse-led health centers with critical resources for practice transformation improvement and access to a larger network of clinical peers. If you're interested in joining one of these networks, you can contact us through our NPSAN webpage or through the email addresses that are at the end of this presentation. So I want to thank you all for sitting through that little introduction. Uh, at this time, I would like to turn things over to our, pre our presenters, Sunny and Harold. Um, I will let them uh, go ahead and introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their program, and uh, they can take it away. Thank you all very much. Great. Thank you so much. If you can go to the next slide, please. So you can see the agenda. We'll be going through. Uh, we'll be we'll welcome you and introduce ourselves and go through our presentations. And we will be taking questions and answers, but after the at the end of the formal presentation. So do please uh, put any questions you have into the question box on your right. Um, uh, next slide. So first of all, to introduce uh, 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 us, who's speaking to you, and why you should be listening to us. So my name is Harold Lehman. I'm a professor of informatics at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. I've been involved in informatics teaching for a good 15 years or more uh, at all levels, from the um, so certificate level through PhD uh, at, over at Johns Hopkins, and in particular was involved with the, uh, the Office of the National Coordinator, the ONC Workforce Training Program back in 2010, and then again now, and I'll get back to that in a minute. But Sunny, if you want to say a couple of words. Yeah, hi, thanks. I'm Sunny Ainley, and I'm with Normandale Community College in Balmy, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm also the principal investigator for this 2015-2017 Health and Human Services Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT Healthcare Professional Workforce Training Program. And I've been involved in uh, workforce training for 20 years or so. And also, we specialize in organizational development, change management, and health IT here. So this is a perfect fit, and we're um, super excited to be with you guys today and, and um, be a part of the transformation that you guys are moving forward. And in particular, the reason you're hearing from both of us is that uh, as part of the pool of grantees for this program, we realized early on that, that Normandale and Hopkins could synergize talents and resources so that we can offer rich and supported and accredited training that includes both CME and MOC credit. It's completely online, except accessible to learning, to an expansive and diverse healthcare population across the country, all with built-in learning support and guidance. Uh, so, uh, so that's the, so, um, so that's the enticing part. So, this this workforce training program uh, is a complement to the meaningful use program that I think you all have experience with. I like to paraphrase Soil and Green to say that uh, health IT is people. It's not just health IT. It's not just technology. And the ONC recognized this. 
and early on, along with the whole meaningful use program of giving uh, m money for for meaningful, demonstrating meaningful use of certified in health IT, uh, they uh, funded a number of workforce uh, ex experiences. Um, the main one that we'll be talking about today is a, um, a series of modules that were uh, assembled back in 2010-2012. There are 20 topics that were uh, that were put together and actually released for free uh, all over the world. The community colleges in particular were asked to turn those material into courses and they went ahead and, trade, uh, and trained li literally tens of thousands of, of people uh, using those modules. And as you were able to, if, uh, as you can see, the, the overall goal of these modules uh, is to uh, to tackle uh, healthcare workers' use of health IT. Uh, as you just heard, uh, at least one quarter of the new uh, initiatives are about using health IT directly. But if you want to report the other, you know, all the other three, the three, the, the other three bullet points are about reporting, and none of that can happen without IT either. So uh, uh, having so there's recognition that now that we have these these machines and this software, now how do we incorporate it into our environment in a productive way to support team-based care, uh, hospitals and clinics, long-term care facilities, and patient-centered medical homes, and patients themselves, which is um, uh, an interesting conversation we've had all, all along. Uh, next slide, please. I mentioned that there were 20 uh, modules or 20 components that were tackled initially. Uh, the ONC uh, for this go-around uh, uh, had discussions with their stakeholders and experts and folks, and they came up with these four areas that uh, was um, asking and needing kind of uh, uh, educational and training materials. So when we were when we were uh, our funding basically is to was to create uh, components or modules for each one of these areas, um, plus the fifth one of data analytics. Uh, that fifth one came out of all the discussions uh, that we've had over the year and a half that this program has been uh, in place. Um, so what I'm, as you'll hear, a module. Uh, Basically, and one of these components, I'm sorry, one of these components ends up being about um, uh, about 10 to 15 hours of material that, that will be, it gets to be put online. And Sunny and I, or Norman Dale and Hopkins, are working together to provide their modules to you uh, free of charge uh, through their learning environment. Um, so you can see these four areas. That so we're not the only ones doing this across the country. There, there are other universities, uh, but we're all tackling in some way population health, as you can see, new care and delivery and payment models that you just heard about, and then how does it translate into value-based care and patient-centered care and care coordination. Uh, and in each case, the issue is how, not just the, it's not just health IT, but it's this area itself. And it's not just the area itself, it's how health IT either supports or embodies what you're trying to do. So can we go to the next slide, please? So the, the goal, and I hope you appreciate the visual pun, the goal here is to prepare for this transition to value-driven care. And what's interesting is that with all the churn in Washington right now, and with all the doubts about Obamacare and such, the n nobody is saying that these uh, forces are going away. So there will be payment reform, there will be continued need and use of health IT, uh, and so um, uh, whatever learning one gets uh, for, for in these areas will actually stand you in good stead going forward. Um, so uh, and you can see our, our blurb there about the training will help your organization understand health transformation in a practicable 
sorry, practical and usable way. And, and even though I come from a university, we really worked hard to make it practical and usable, why it's important and how it will impact your, your job and, uh, and so forth. Next slide, please. Uh, you, and, and continuing on the, those, those notions of uh, uh, team-based care, uh, you can see that here are the topics uh, that we are covering, uh, and uh, in our in our um, uh, in our joint uh, effort. Next slide, please. And finally, as I already uh, s suggested, this is about uh, empowering the individuals. Um, as as nurse practitioners and others face population health, for instance, uh, needing to go from the training and experience you have and I've had as a clinician, you know, dealing with one patient at a time, now we really need to face uh, care of a population of patients. And if you think about all these different areas uh, involved, how to uh, maximal, maximize the management of those populations. So that means we have to think a bit different, and uh, that's what our training is geared towards. Next slide, please. So uh, uh, we have uh, um, a number of courses uh, uh, that were either developed uh, by Hopkins or, or, or others. Um, the population health courses. There are three courses. We're showing you one of them here. Uh, one is population health policies. The other is data analytics. And the third is interventions. Uh, and so, um, and the, I, these, the material here was developed by faculty at Johns Hopkins uh, and vetted by them uh, and then um, uh, put into a form that uh, can be used by, uh, by, by anybody online. Uh, Sonny's going to go through the Normandale courses in, in a second. I, just, I do want to reiterate that these courses are free and available to all, and uh, we'll come back to that later as well. Take it away, Sonny. Great. Thank you. Next slide, please. I just want everybody to know that it was uh, 20 below here two days ago. I thought I'd throw in that little piece of trivia. Um, I'm going to uh, cover uh, two other of the courses that are very well aligned to the TCPI goals and outcomes and kind of what your organizations or individually are trying to accomplish. So one is, um, one course is understanding healthcare data analytics. And that's really a foundational course in data and data analytics. So it should provide uh, kind of some knowledge and upskilling for individuals to then be able to move forward and work with some of those quality places um, with the data and information for quality within care delivery, hopefully kind of in that reimbursement space, some of those quality improvement activities um, and things like that. And really, you know, the, the underpinning of everything within the technology side and the care, care side is that you need the data and information, but you also need to understand it. You need to be able to talk to each other about it. Um, and if you can kind of, again, create that collective competency among your, amongst your organization as far as your data and information, I think you'll be able to better move forward with your transformation efforts. Next slide, please. And then there's this general space of just understanding what value-based care is, what's driving it. Um, what are the intended outcomes of the concepts within value-based care and some of those mandates that are coming through from CMS and our um, lawmakers. So this course gives you a foundational understanding of value-based care or value-driven care, but then it also ties it back to, so how does it relate to the actual care delivery system? How does it relate to or how does it affect our uh, healthcare industry, like how we are organized, you know, what what is what does an ACO really mean, and what does it look like, and you know, why is it important, and what change will it affect, um, and also what are some of those business models that are changing, and I think people think, well, I don't really need to understand that because I'm, you know, I'm in care delivery, and I'm, you know, touching patients 
than and things like that. But contextually, the understanding of value-based care is super important because a lot of things things are changing, and if you don't understand why they're changing, or if you don't really understand how that data is being used in the long run, um, then it it affects kind of that whole pipeline of quality. So this this would be a great course to give you kind of that foundation. Next slide. So even the nuts and bolts of the training programs, we've really um, thought carefully about how we design these training programs, and we wanted them to be accessible. We wanted them to be consumable, um, you know, and approachable. So we created the courses to be completely online. So you can do it anywhere, anytime, as long as you have internet connection and a computer. Um, we provide a, a warm body behind the training as well to support you if you need help or if you have questions or um, whatever, you know, whatever kind of support that you might need so you're not out there all alone. Um, the courses are very consumable. They're, you know, anywhere from 7 to 11 hours of learning and um, so you can kind of do them in bite-sized uh, portions. They are free of charge to anybody who is working in a healthcare facility um, or something that is well related to healthcare. So it doesn't mean that you have to be on the actual care delivery side. In fact, our goal is to have everybody with a nation really upskilled to a certain level so that, as Harold alluded to, we have that enterprise knowledge across an organization and across the system. So we have, you know, people who are working in insurance. We have ancillary groups. Allied Health, Pharmacy, um, all, those, all those pieces of the puzzle that really need to work together. There is continual enrollment in the program, so you can enroll every two weeks. Our cohorts start every two weeks, and we will be training all the way through May. I do caution you, we do have a ceiling, so if there is a point in which um, we are maxed out on, on our ability to train certain numbers, so I would encourage you guys to enroll um, as early as you can. The training is, um, we're very lucky to uh, have this partnership with Johns Hopkins, and the training is um, CME eligible, and there are CME credits and maintenance of um, certification um, as well. And there is a one-time $45 fee just for those, but the, everything else, everything else is free, but if you choose to do the CMUs, then it's $45. Next slide. So I just wanted to maybe, <laughs> oh wait, there's more, um, give you a sneak peek at who currently is taking the training just to see if you can see yourselves in there, um, but also to let you know that it's, it's really a beautiful, diverse group of healthcare professionals that are, are taking the, the training, which proves that this is really a foundational level of, of knowledge and wisdom that um, could benefit m most people. Next slide. So as far as people within kind of their um, work roles, you can see that the largest percentage of trainees are within kind of that healthcare or data or business analyst role and quality improvement, which makes total sense. We would have, we would assume that. And then your next largest area is um, individuals who are working in care delivery. The places we would love to see in, in increase, of course, is that care delivery side, but also we'd love to see some more leadership um, joining in on the training so that they can be our thought and change, ag thought and change agents. And I think we'd love to see some more of the business side so that they can tie into the, the business and the financial piece to the care delivery piece. Next slide. These are the different types of organizations or organizational structures or kind of um, care settings that are taking our training. And again, you'll see hospitals and clinics. So I think that's a no-brainer. Uh, we'd love to see some more of those solo and group practices joining in, um, and of course some of those ancillary groups. Next slide.
And then we do a survey where we solicit information about uh, the trainees' um, educational levels. And although you see that it's a pretty high level of education, I just want to reiterate that we are we welcome everybody into the training regardless of education. And there is also kind of this aspect of professional and career development as you take this training. Um, if, if you're a, an organizational leader, you might think about who do you want to um, upskill and who do you want to lift up and move forward because they have potential or they could really use some um, acknowledgement and professional and career development. Next slide. So let's just have a little sneaky peeky at what this training looks like. Next slide, please. I'm just going to do a series of screenshots and you can see we have everything that um, kind of nicely built into a learning management system. It's all self-facilitated. It's um, voiced over so that you can also listen to it and you can visually see it um, with uh, interactivity and, and graphics. Next slide. Next slide. You see a little sample. Next slide. And it'll look a little different, you know, depending upon the different courses. Um, in this course, you'll see kind of a learning path, so it helps you kind of navigate through what you are currently doing and what you might be doing later on. Every course has activities and assessments so that you can kind of do a competency check. Next slide. Shows you a little bit of the interactivity. Next slide, please. Great. And then we'll just move to the next slide. So hopefully we covered uh, kind of the meat and potatoes of what you guys are hoping to hear, but we'd love to hear your questions and, and be able to answer those. So I'm going to pass it back to our hosts um, to move to the next section or questions. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, Harold and Sunny, thank you very much for giving that overview. So. Um, you can see the link to the courses up on your screen right now, um, and we've got some questions going in, but if you, if you have questions for Harold or Sonny about the training program, now would be the time. You could submit those, again, through the question pane. Um, I'm going to flip forward a couple while you're thinking about your questions to an upcoming Lunch and Learn session that we have. And again, that's your question pane. Um, so yeah, we had an upcoming Lunch and Learn um, January 11, uh, 2017 on uh, medication management and uh, reconciliation. So we hope that you will be able to join us for that one as well. Uh, again, through the TCPI grant program, NNCC and AANP will be um, providing these sort of Lunch and Learns uh, periodically throughout the year. So uh, join us for that one. And if you have an idea of a great Lunch and Learn, uh, please reach out to us and let us know. So, I'm going to go back up again. Uh, again, you can see the question panel is. And we will um, go through some of the questions that we have in. The first one that, that came across almost immediately, uh, Sunny and Harold, was whether or not these trainings are in other languages besides English, especially Spanish. Right now, they are not. OK. Um, all right. Um, do you have other? Yeah, it's funny, and Harold, and the question that we had that came in was, um, in terms of like a head of payment reform, what do you think is like the biggest takeaway or gain for someone taking this training? Uh, so, we, go ahead. So, no, no, go ahead. No, well, we, we don't address the payment issues as much as the management of the population. That, that is implicit in uh, the payment reform. So um, we, we we cover uh, how to un what what the population health policies are, how to understand the data that they generate, and what to do, and and how to intervene both uh, f on the individual level, 
that you can see for the population as well as the population level. Um, there are financial implications of that, uh, which we discuss. Um, so, I'll just a little bit of that. Go ahead, Sunny. Yeah, and I'll just add that I think from a workforce development perspective, what I feel like the Office of the National Coordinator and kind of what Health and Human Services are trying to do is, I think there's this general, um, this generally accepted kind of acknowledgement that there's a lack of the, the why we put on there the so what or the why. Um, you know, there's just there's so much going on. There's so much reform. There's policies. There's new technology, and people are doing, but they're not understanding why. So, to me, one of the biggest takeaways is the why. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why is it important? How are we? How do I contribute to this kind of transformation space where we're improving? How does my work? contribute to the organization and to better care. Um, you know, it, it just, I think it weaves everything together. And then the next level it is, then it gives me some tangible skills, gives me some pockets of information and knowledge um, in areas that I just didn't have before, which I think makes me a more valuable employee. I think it makes me more valuable uh, um, asset to the organization for uh, just going towards this targeted transformation. Um, and it's complicated and it's hard work and we're not going to do it all at once, but if we do it piece by piece and if we can get our workforce at a place where we're thinking from an analyst perspective instead of um, just doing, and doing is important, but now really understanding the why of what we're doing. And, and just to echo that, when we just talked to uh, the the leadership at, at Johns Hopkins, we say, you know, who in your organization needs this stuff? They, she, she said, everybody from the registrar mm -hmm. uh, at the, the front desk all the way through her top leadership, who even though they're in top leadership, they still don't exactly understand what's going on. So um, uh, uh, there's no lack of need to get a both a holistic point of view, as Sonny's saying, as well as some of the specific uh, uh, tactics and, and and so forth, and certainly, uh, I think if anything, when you when you go through this, when you're done, you'll be literate, and so when you see uh, when you when you see um, even your Google news feed, if you see you know uh, snippets of policy coming down the line, or if you see uh, articles or whatever, you'll ha you'll be much better uh, positioned to understand what everybody's talking about. Sure. That's, um, that's really great, Sonny and Harold, and I actually wanted to jump on that because we do a lot of work through NNCC um, around health IT with uh, nurse-led health centers and practices. And one thing they bring up is that when it comes to things like uh, the importance of data analytics or population health management, um, their medical director, their providers may have heard about this, uh, understand that this is, this is a growing aspect of healthcare delivery, uh, but because so many practices are incorporating care teams, and so much of what you need to do for population health management, like Harold mentioned, involves the front desk. It involves your nurses, your MAs. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to have an understanding of this so that they're thinking beyond the patients that are coming into the practice that day and to, you know, on a, on a monthly, an annual basis, who are, who are the patients that we're managing and what do they need? So um, I completely agree uh, that, that, yes, this is appropriate and necessary for all members of the healthcare team um, and, and administration as well. Um, so one of the questions that we had is, is with um, population health goals and reform, with, oh, is there an idea of what will happen with population health goals and reform with the repeal of the ACA? question mark, time frames, question mark. Um, so, that, um, Harold or Sonny, do, do you want to you tackle either that or I can talk about that a little bit? Sure, because we're all experts on what's going to happen in the next four years. <laughs> I just took out my 10-foot pole. I'm like, not touching that 10-foot pole. Well, well, but, but uh, I, it's, it's, a, it's an important question and it's a great question. And I've been asking uh, everybody, I can get my hands on that exact same question. 
uh, and I don't, and um, so uh, in terms of payment reform, I don't think, so, so the laws that pertain to payment reform, MACRA and some of the others, are not the ACA, uh, and they have not been uh, voted on for repeal uh, a million times by Congress. So um, there does not seem to be a stomach for, for tackling that right now. Uh, obviously, things can change, and your, model, you know, your mileage can vary. But we, it looks like these, and I have to be honest, we don't tackle those politics uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in our material for two reasons. It's funded by the federal government, number one. But number two is we're trying to teach principles that are not, are not subject to whim. And uh, a lot of the, most of the stuff that are in our materials are uh, what uh, one of my professors once called poetry equipment for living. And I think a lot of this stuff that we go through is uh, gives you those skills that go beyond the specific laws being passed or not passed. Well, and yeah, I, I might add this piece that it you know actually the the training and the knowledge and wisdom that I think you'll acquire from the training would probably position you to be able to almost maybe think through that question on your own understanding kind of what is covered within, like Harold said, under legislation versus, you know, what is this CMS piece or what's this and, um, and what's driving it. And once you get your hands around kind of this reform space and transformation, I personally feel like it's a movement that is, that has legs of its own. I don't know if there's any, anything that's going to kind of stop this boat. It, it's left the dock and even though we might be moving into unknown kind of territory, um, I think if you kind of if you do some of these trainings and kind of really kind of learn about the context of it, I think you'll be able to kind of navigate that question, you know, on your own even better. Um, Sunny, you actually kind of segue nice, quite nicely into our next question. Um, so Margaret's asking, uh, with regards to the sessions or the coursework, how many sessions are there within the training course? And then asking, when will the registration be open for the first session or sessions? Sure. So the training is already open, and it's uh, available for um, registration. And when you say a session, I think we could probably break it down into maybe units. And each course is different, but, you know, there's probably anywhere from three to five to seven units um, per course. And, you know, again, Harold, uh, I believe, talked about how each course is, you know, we range from between seven hours of learning to 11 hours of learning. And again, it's just going to depend upon your learning style. Personally, I probably take a little longer because I'm a note taker and I'm a, I have to sit and think about stuff, but somebody else might breeze through it. And it's kind of nice to be able to do it this way, too, because if, if you have pockets of deep knowledge in areas that are being covered, um, you'll be able to just kind of go through it, but you can really kind of slow down in the areas that are new or, in, you know, kind of um, um, unknown area for you. Did I answer all of it? Was there something else? No, I think that um, I think that addressed the question. Um, thank you very much. I, I, one thing to add is that uh, we worked hard that uh, the longest chunk of a of a, a lecture or whatever is about is no more than twenty minutes. So that uh, those uh, even something something that is eight hours long is twenty four chunks um, mm -hmm. plus the activities and such. But, so the idea is that you should be able to get a good aerobic workout while you're going through the <laughs> same tool. Okay. Um, so the next question that we have is, um, in terms of how this, uh, these courses were designed, is there like a typical or an ideal type of practice that this has been developed or designed for? No. Um, we, we, we try to be as inclusive as possible. Uh, and in the list, of, the long list of eligible folks that Sunny mentioned, she left out the public health officers. So, um, so, so it's really not. We're we're pointing out its utility towards healthcare workers, and we've definitely had 
that uh, we, we definitely had the notion of you are you are responsible for care of a human being or a bunch of human beings uh, as the kind of in the mental model, but not any particular style of practice. I think there was care given to make sure that we covered, um, you know, not obviously primary care, but uh, you know, more expansive than that as well. So, I mean, there's another, yeah, the next question we have is in terms of um, electronic health record systems. So, I mean, there's a number of systems out there and practices use, you know, any number of them. Uh, have you, is there a specific type of EHR system that uh, you reference or how best do you, um, does the, the coursework address diverse EHR systems and the use of uh, understanding and utilizing data and pulling data from it? Um, I'm going to just hop in here really quick because that is a fantastic question and I'm super glad that somebody brought this up. Um, I always kind of considered this set of training, so there was an initial set of training between 2010 and 2013 that was funded by the ONC and this is the next generation training and I always kind of consider this one uh, more in the kind of utilization and optimization space like Health IT 3.0. And when, really when you get to this place, you're kind of developing knowledge, wisdom, skills to be able to use the information from the systems. It feels like systems are kind of set up and, you know, there's, there's kind of available training on how to, like, utilize the system, but it's really how do we leverage and optimize what the systems can do as far as their data and information. So there's very little actual... EHR training, and it's much more about the context of, you know, how this data and information lives, resides. Um, you know, there in the future will be uh, some training around interoperability and health information exchange, and that one goes a little bit more into a uh, heavier technical side, but as far as actual, actually like integrating in with the, the EHR, there's very little of it. It's really about how do you empower yourself to be able to um, use the system and the information and the data to then affect your care delivery and your care coordination and your quality and your financials. Harold, do you have... You know, I think, just as you're talking, a metaphor that comes to mind is uh, this is a course about the stethoscope, not about the Lippmann stethoscope, right? So, you know, when you use a stethoscope, right. you worry about the heart sounds. You're not, you, and we're not worrying about the earbuds or, the, or how, to, how to change from a bell to a diaphragm and stuff like that. So, um, and what's been shown, especially with electronic health records in particular, there's so much chart junk and there's so much stuff in the way to prevent you from thinking clearly. It's really important to have a mental model uh, when you walk into the data or the population or the, all these things. And uh, if you walk into the electronic health record with a, a with a mind of what you want it to do for you, uh, then you don't become hostage to all the buttons and clicks and radios and things. Uh, and um, you really get the machine to do what you what you need to accomplish rather than you becoming, you know, one of those creatures from uh, what the, the the movie Metropolis where they they, <laughs> they drudge to and fro other work underground as they, you know, try to, to put the, the, the hands of the clock on the, on the lights. So this is really about your brain and uh, having you think clearly so that you can use these tools to, to get to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Yeah, and that's a super great point because really what these trainings will do is it will empower you to be able to maneuver with um, health IT in a better way. You, you obviously would have a better insight on how to choose your EHR and, you know, specifications and configurations and, you know, how are they supposed to perform and, you know, what kind of data should be coming out of it. And so really it's kind of the precursor to being able to even, like, work with an EHR. So now you understand how um, to work with that EHR in a very um, high quality way and productive way. Yeah. I
agree because I think once you understand the foundation, right, it only helps to improve um, uh, like your quality improvement processes, right? Because now that you, if you understand the data, then you can plan accordingly and adjust accordingly for how to, you know, uh, optimize your practice in other ways. Right, because so often we're driven by here's what the system can do, and instead we should really be approaching it as here's what we want the system to do. So now how do we work with the system? So, uh, Sonny and Harold, can you um, uh, speak again to uh, the cost of the training and who can attend? That was another question raised. Um, does, uh, the word, does the word free, I just want you to remember the word free, okay, just zero and free. <laughs> Um, if, you, if you need, if you want CME, uh, then there is that one-time $45 fee to, to deal with that. What's cool about that, that, that money is that uh, you can get up to 52 hours of CME. So if you go through this whole thing, you've, you've, you know, you've gotten your two years of required CME under your belt uh, for, for, for uh, one, one <laughs> I feel like a salesman. For a once a one time forty five dollars, so it is free, um, and uh, um, so I think so. That, that there's that. It, the, of course, there's the cost of sitting down and doing all the work, and that's called opportunity cost. But that's, but we don't. That, that's not in terms of dollars. In terms of who can take it, any really anybody can take it. Um, and if you're on this call, you are eligible to take this stuff. Great. Really, the, the kind of deciding factor for who can take it is that you know, are you are you involved in the activities of healthcare, whether you're you know, and in whatever role that you're in, whether you're supporting the organization, whether you're an affiliate organization that supports healthcare, um, they just really want to upskill people on uh, mass to move everything forward. Thank you very much, uh, Harold and Sunny. Um, we don't have any questions right now, so we just wanted to quickly show uh, where a couple of people have had issues accessing the courses via Pair Circuit. So we just wanted to quickly show you what the um, what the courses actually look like if you go and you click on it. So bear with us while um, it connects to the web. Sometimes it takes a little while uh, when we're going through a uh, go -go -to meeting like this. But uh, as both, both Harold and Sonny mentioned, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, these are both grant-funded programs. So um, when you go to NP Academy, our hosting site for educational programs, um, you can see through the link at the top, these are our featured programs, uh, the three that we just mentioned, value-based care, population health, and understanding healthcare data analytics. If you uh, scroll down a little bit farther. If you click on um, on Get Started, the green Get Start or the green uh, Learn More, um, you'll see more of a description. And when you click Get Started, you'll be prompted to create a quick NP Academy account, and then that will take you um, again to the the link for the full session. Um, and uh, Harold and Sunny mentioned these are grant funded programs, so we have to uh, gather a little bit of data about you and your practice because it's important to our funders. Uh, that helps justify these programs and it helps keep them free to, uh, to everybody involved. So uh, please uh, make sure you fill out those forms uh, so that we have all the information we need and so that we can keep providing uh, educational and training programming like this. So uh, we'll go back to the, the slide deck now uh, and see if there are any last uh, questions that, uh, that folks have. And again, we will send out a link to the recorded version of this webinar after the session has ended, as well as um, we'll email out, I apologize, I know there was an issue with the handout link not working. We'll directly send out that PDF to all registered uh, viewers as well. So um, I don't think we have anything else. Uh, so. Uh, at this point, I guess we'll just uh, break, and again, I want to thank everybody for joining us, and especially thank Harold and Sunny for uh, going over these wonderful products, and uh, we hope that you'll take advantage of them, and if you have any questions, uh, please reach out uh, to us, and, and we'll address them as quickly as possible. Thank you for the opportunity.
Thank you, Rizma. Well, and uh, good luck, everybody. It's uh, in the new year. Have a good and safe holiday, and um, I wish you luck as we face our our future. <laughs> our shifting healthcare landscape. Thank you very much, Harold. All right. Take, Take care, care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.